recursion. Let's talk about recursion. Um, so let's build, let's do this by writing a recursive function. So a recursive function is recursive function calls itself. So a recursive function or a method uh, is one that calls itself. We use methods in Java. Um, so let's do that. I'm going to write one right here. Um, public void uh, recurse. And uh, here's the simplest one you could write. Here is a recurse function that calls itself a uh, member function. So main m is new main m dot recurse. So here it is. Uh, I create a new instance of the main class and then I call this recurse method and right here. And then so that's going to go here. The first thing it's going to do is going to call itself. So it's going to go back up here and this is going to call itself and it's going to call itself and it's going to call. And uh, so on to the infinity. Uh, let's do, let's have it print out the recurse here. And uh, so what do you think is going to happen when we run this? Let's try it. I'm running it. And boom, there it is. So here's what happened. I'm going to scroll up here. It's going to scroll up. Okay, a lot of, there you go. So I printed out recurse, 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 recurse a bunch of times until, boom. Exception, Java language stack overflow error. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, what is this stack they're talking about? So the easiest way to think about this is as a stack of papers. So basically, when you call a method in Java, like recurs, um, when this method gets called, we take a sheet of paper and put it down, and that's the recurs call. And in that sheet of paper, you're going to write all the local variables for that method invocation. In this case, there are none, but nonetheless, uh, you still put the paper down. So the next time we call recurs, we put down another sheet of paper on top of that first one. And then we call it again, we put another sheet of paper. And again, so every time we call recurs, we put down a sheet of paper. Now, when we return from the recurs method, which we never do here, but when we return from a method, we pull out that sheet of paper. So what's happening here is that we keep adding papers and papers and papers, and we're building this big stack of papers. And at some point right here, it says enough is enough because each one of these takes up memory and there's a limit what the JVM allows and the stack overflows. So the stack of papers overflows or you know falls over. Um, and uh, you can change the actual number in the JVM configuration, but nonetheless, it, it will always be a finite number because right? you only have a finite amount of memory uh, so far. So that's the stack overflow error. So what you want to do is if you want to have a method call itself, you need some way to stop it. How are you going to do that? So let's say we want this to print out recurs 10 times and then stop. How can we do that? Well, you know, basically we're going to have, we're going to need some way of knowing, you know, what call this is. So the way we can do that is with a parameter. So I'm going to give this guy a parameter uh, count. And then I'm going to print out, so I said if count is uh, less than or equal to zero, then I'm done. I'm gonna print out done. Otherwise, I'm gonna recursively call myself. And so now this takes a count. So I'm gonna actually call myself with count minus one. And the first time around, I'm gonna call myself with a count of 10. So you see what we did here, we say, the recurse function is now prints recurs. Then, if the count is less than zero, then I'm done. So that means we return from the method. We don't do not call the recursive function, right? So you know we actually go down here, and then there's nothing. So we're done. We return. So if I call this with zero, I can run that, and it just says return recurs done. So it's gonna print this line, then this line, then return. Uh, but if I call it with one, I'm gonna run that. And it's going to go recurse, recurse, and then done. So it prints it two times. If I call it with a 10, it's going to print recurse 10 times. 
and change this. I'm going to go make it more obvious. I'm going to put the number there. So the first time I call it, it says 10 because then uh, 10 is not less than zero. So we go here, we call ourselves with a recurs of nine. We come up here and it prints out nine recurs and so on. Okay, so we get to zero and then it's done. So that's a recursive function. This this statement here, we call it, you know, sometimes a base case. If you know a little bit of math, you know about inductive proof, there's a base case, or sometimes we call it a determination condition. So it goes by various names, but basically every recursive method in a program has to have a case, so it has to be a combination of parameters, in this case, any number less than zero, for which that method does not do the recursive call. In this case, that means the count is less than zero. Okay, so, uh, so that, that's recursion. Now, of course, if we wanted to, if our goal was to print the numbers, you know, 10 all the way to zero, we you wouldn't do this. This you know you would use a for loop. You say for integer i equals ten i uh, semicolon i while i is greater than or equal to zero i plus plus and we just print out i. Okay. So we call that for we call loops iteration. So. I print the word curves. So when we run that, oops, uh, bug, I should have done minus minus. So that prints out. So you know the, this is the way of doing it recursively, and then it says done, and then it does it iteratively. So this is the way we would do it in a real program if that's what we wanted to do. I, I'm just explaining to you how recursion works. However, so when do we when do we do use uh, recursion? Well, some there's times when having recursive calls makes your program a lot easier to understand and read. Um, this is not one case, and you know in this case clearly this for loop is a lot easier to understand than this recursive method. Hopefully you agree. Uh, right, so you can easily see this is going to print 10 numbers. It's a little bit harder to see that this is going to print 10 numbers. And this is actually going to use up more memory, etc. Well, depending on the compiler. Uh, so, but there are cases when recursion is, is much, much easier to program and to understand than trying to do it iteratively. And one of those cases is, you know, binary search. Another case is when you're implementing a merge sort, um, etc. And uh, and but we will cover those in other videos.